Hello YouTubers, today we are going to create a Amazon DynamoDB table in the command line. Let's get started. As you can see here, I am in the AWS Management Console. Uh, I am in the North Virginia region. Let's change that to Canada. All right, now I've switched over to the Canada region, the central region. The next thing I'm going to do is click DynamoDB. As we know with DynamoDB, it is a non-relational non -relational database. Basically what that means is you can basically add in data uh, in any order, any sort. Uh, it doesn't have to follow, it doesn't have to follow as strict as guidelines as maybe a relational database. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to click create table and the table name we're going to give is users. So this might be a good table to use if we were creating a database for our users that are planning a blog or they're a part of a, uh, a forum site and we want to keep track of all of our users. We're going to keep track of the users by entering the primary partition key of ID. Um, so that has to be unique for every one of our users. We're going to make that a number and then we're going to add a sort key of email address. So we'll just type in email and then we will leave that as string. Now because this is a basic tutorial, we're just going to use the defaults and we are going to click create. So that, while that's creating, uh, you do have a few different options. Uh, you can actually stream this into, um, let's say you're using a website or you have an endpoint, you could stream this to an endpoint. You could actually stream this to different uh, services like a Data Warehouse if you're using a Kinesis or Firehose or anything like that. Uh, so let's quickly go through some of the tabs that we have. This is the overview section. Um, we don't have any of the, you can see the table name, you can see the primary partition key, and then the sort key of email. Uh, point in time recovery, we do not have that enabled. We, this is not encrypted, and we're not worried about the time to live. You can see when it was created, um, and then you can also see the read and write capacity. Uh, this is important when it comes to, obviously, reading and writing information from the database. It also is important when you're concerned about the billing and the pricing at the end of the, each month. Um, so let's keep going. Under items, this is where we would enter in and, and create different um, items for our database. So what, basically what we could do is we could do create item. Um, so we would want to, uh, let's insert a number. Actually, let's not do that. I remove that. I will remove that. So for the ID, we want to give the person ID of one because it's our first user. Um, and we're going to give that person ID of John Smith at gmail.com. We could also add any additional data that we wanted to to this uh, item. So for example, we could go append. Um, let's say we want to enter in a string and we want to do his first name. So we'll do first, first underscore name. And then we could say his name is John. Um, and then we'll do John's last name as well by appending the string. Let's say last underscore name. Obviously his name is Smith. And then let's say, let's give him one more. Um, let's give him another string of number of posts. So we'll say posts. He's made um, the sky is blue. And then we can click save. And then you can see here, uh, this is the table and the different attributes. If we wanted to, we could actually go back in and we could edit this uh, individual um, 
columns if we wanted to, or we can edit the row by clicking edit, or clicking actions and then going to edit. Let's see, let's, whoops. All right, so if we click that. Um, so yeah, we could actually go back and do edit and we could add in, if we wanted to insert something, we can do maps, list, boolean. Um, let's say, let's, let's give it a boolean of, um, we'll, we'll ask if he's over 18. And this can be true or false, so we'll say true. And then we can click save. Uh, spelled true wrong. Gets you every time. So you can just click save. And as you can see, that attribute was added. Then what we can do next is we can go actions. Oh, we can go click item. Uh, this is going to be our second person. And the email address is going to be Jane Smith at gmail.com um, and then we can actually let's say we'll append the boolean um, we'll say over 18 and then false we could also add something completely different um, let's say we could add a string we'll say parents permission and we could put yes um, and we could add parents name string parents name we'll give him a name of Frank let's capitalize Frank Right. And so this is one of the beauties of using a non-relational database is that you can modify your table as your data changes. Sometimes one of the drawbacks or um, downsides of using a relational database is you would have to do some fancy juggling in order to get this information that you need changed. Or you have to know the schema ahead of time in order to correctly uh, create a database and with or at least a table and with the dynamo db you can just click save and as you can see there are some holes or gaps here in these um, columns which doesn't percent present that big of an issue um, so now that we have those two created we can go over to metrics and this basically just has a graph of the reads and writes and and some of the uh, important stuff to developers. We could actually set up an alarm. So what we could do is we could set up a an, uh, an alarm that every time a new entry has been created into our table, a new item has been created into our table, we could send that person an email saying welcome to our service or welcome to our forms. We can actually adjust the read and write capacity here. Um, it is nice because it gives you a cost estimator for read and writes. Now you can adjust this dynamically. Um, the reason why you would want to adjust this is for latency reasons. Um, if you anticipate a growth in your service, you can do auto scaling and um, do some of the configurations there. Indexes, you could create an index if you wanted to. Um, you can back it up. You can back up the table. You could actually set up Lambda functions based off of, um, again, new new entrance into the um, table. This is where you possibly would want to send that email and say, welcome Jane to our service. Uh, you must get your parents permission in order to submit new forum topics or something along those lines. Access controls, uh, you could set that up if you wanted to. And then we always, if you wanted to, you can give it tags again, Tags are nice when you're looking at the billing aspect of it. You want to know um, how much HR's table is costing as far as the reads and writes per month. 
Uh, so the tags are, are nice for billing. It, it gives you a nice little uh, quickly identifiable uh, way to, to identify a, a cost. Um, so the next thing we could do, we could go back to items. If we wanted to, we could click all or one and we can delete it or we could export it to a CSV, which is basically an Excel, or we could manage the time to live. Um, so I believe that is it. If we wanted to, we could create another item, uh, but I think two items is good enough. Um, so yeah, that's it for this quick tutorial. Uh, the nice thing about DynamoDB is it's pretty flexible in what you can do and how you can use it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to take a look at some of my other videos on YouTube. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, mention in the comments if you are interested in seeing different types of videos, something a little bit uh, more advanced. If you're looking for help or tutorials in a different service, let me know. I'd be happy to work with you and, and assist you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.